Hello everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making an 1830s nightdress and a nightcap. Alright, so let's get started. Um, we're going to start with the Workwoman's Guide. So the Workwoman's Guide actually has three different nightdresses. Um, and this one's really hidden because it doesn't have a title or an engraving or anything else. It's just kind of there. It just says plate 8 and figure 6. But it says this is an exceedingly neat looking nightdress and for full size is cut according to the following dimensions. Cut two breasts, one yard wide and one and a half yard long. So much sew up the seams, leaving eight nails, leaving three nails from the top for armholes. Cut two shoulder pieces according to figure seven, which represents half, the letter D being the double part. If it is made up in calico, put in neat piping around the shoulder piece as it materially strengthens the nightdress, and after pulling the sides evenly round to the other and setting in the sleeves, lay the upper shoulder piece over the lower one. Pipe and frill it up the neck, and if preferred, a collar may be added with a second frill above. If the nightdress is made of linen, it must be neatly stitched instead of piped. The sleeves are eight nails squared, and the wristband, as in figure 11, four nails squared to which a frill is added. So we're going to make it up slightly differently, so I'm copying an original out of the Met. But here are the nightdresses. So this is the night dress, first nightdress and second one, and this is the one we're making. The uh, Met nightgown had a yoke, so I definitely wanted this one for the yoke. Um, it does show some things differently, so the Met one goes down, the yoke goes down further, and there's a wider neckline to which the frill is added. And it has shorter sleeves. The, shoulders, the sleeves only go about to the shoulder length, um, to elbow length. And there are also gussets, which um, the engraving shows here, but it's not talked about in the direction, so we're going to make that up. I am going to add some gores to the skirt because a yard width is only 36 inches, and so I don't think 72 inches is quite wide enough of a hem. I'm going to make up a little bit of a gore there. But other than that, we'll make it up, you know, similar to what it calls for. Here's the, um, they call it the shoulder piece, it's the yoke. And I enlarged this piece and printed it out, so I already have that ready to go. Not entirely sure it's going to fit, but we're going to work with what we got. And I have plenty of fabric so that if, for whatever reason, this doesn't work, we can cut it again. And the directions don't say too, but I'm going to cut two of these yokes um, just for just so the fabric won't end up being see-through and um, to kind of give some finished edges to the whole ensemble. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a second one. So it's going to cut the body of the dress. And I think I'm going to rip the uh, skirt panel parts. So as far as length, it says one and a half yards long. That's pretty long on me. I'm looking at more a yard and a quarter for my height. All right, so there's two skirt lengths. And again, I want to cut some gores as well. And with this extra gore, because this is going to give me extra space in the armhole, I may not actually need the gussets, which will be really nice. Alright, let's go ahead and start by attaching these skirt pieces. And I'm probably going to flat fell these seams, which is basically just running the seam twice. So we're going to run the seam, fold the seam over, and then run it a second time. And it'll hide all the raw edges, and because it's stitched twice, it's more secure. And that's a very period method of um, finishing up seams, especially on underpinnings. So while we're here, let's go ahead and look at the nightcap. I'm going to take that out. Okay, so I think we're going to make a neat, comfortable day or nightcap. It's on page 66, and it's plate 9, figure 20, so it makes up like this. And I probably will do the frill all the way around is what I'm thinking. So this shape is particularly suitable for day caps for young servants or night caps for any age or station. If intended for day caps, if you made of clear or clear muslin, if for night caps of check or calico. So we're just going to make it with our muslin that we have. It says the headpiece is sloped off at ear from A to B and is made of double as to be only two nail seat when the cap is completed. So, okay, and it doesn't have like a pattern piece like I'm used to seeing with these. So, they just give dimension, so this is going to be quite fun. It says length of headpiece down the selvage is eight nails, which is 18 inches. 
And let's look at the width. It says a width of headpiece is four, so that's nine. And then we'll attach the little frill here. It does say it needs to be sloped slightly. Let me look at that image. Sloped slightly. Length of crown down the selvage is six nails. And width is four nails. It doesn't look like a cap shape, so it doesn't give me any other directions. Unless I'm, I can just use this shape, perhaps, and just round it out. I think that'll work. So if I just round out the top a little bit. Cool. We'll say that's good. So I have this piece and these two pieces. This piece, I'm going to assume, gets... Um, sewn into this piece, but I'm going to need to gather it all the way around, I would think. Yeah, pretty much all the way around. So I'm going to run a gathering thread all the way around here first off, and then we can talk about attaching everything else. So I have stitched together the actual gown part and did a run of bell steam so all the seams are nice and hidden. And so, and I also ran a gathering thread against the very top, so we're ready to put on the yoke, so I thought we can go ahead and work on the yoke real quick. So, I've put running, I put gathering stitches all throughout the ruffle. There's that. I think I'm going to go ahead and put the piping on, maybe just one side of this. Alright, we are now ready to sew the nightgown onto the yoke. So I attached the piping, and we're going to stitch it onto the piping side. This is the back. Yep. Okay. I'm going to mark the center back. And this is going to go here. gather to fit. And there's the back. I'm doing the same thing with the front. I already did a little slit on the front. I just need to iron it over and make it all nice and neat. I just haven't done that yet. Alright, now I get to back stitch over the whole thing. So just right in the ditch. Put on this other side. And then I stitched the piping on. There's a nice little seam right here to kind of tell me exactly where to put my stitches. Alright, so we're working on sleeves. I uh, hammer dive when I was cutting them, so um, basically I cut a sleeve that's, um, well, the Work Woman's Guide suggests it to be, I think it was eight nails square, which um, wasn't going to work. So eight nails ended up being like 18 inches, and I didn't want a super long sleeve like they were showing. I wanted to copy the original, which is a three quarters inch sleeve, so I opted for a nine inch long sleeve, and then to gather it into the armhole, I was going to have to have it about 40 inches. So my rectangles are now 10 inches this way and 40 inches that way. I have stitched them together once. I'm working on the um, the felling. So basically what it means when you run and fell a seam is you seam it up like normal with a running stitch and then you take that seam, cut down one side and then you fold the long side over twice to where it's nice and hidden and you're just going to run it through again with another running stitch to kind of hold it in place. It's very similar to the seam that we use nowadays for jeans, sort of. So when it's done, you have this on the back side and on the front side, it looks like this. So I'm going to do that for both sleeves. I'm also going to run a gathering thread on both ends of the sleeve because we're going to need to gather it into a um, band near the elbow. And we're also going to need to gather it into the arm side. 
All right, I think it's time to put in some sleeves. This is like basically my armhole. And I have the completed sleeve, so it has just the little band and the ruffle on it. And the side is just, it has the gathering that I put in. I meant for it to be fairly loosely gathered. I want it more gathered towards the top than the bottom. So there's one thing put in, this is kind of what it looks like from the front side. I think that's pretty evenly gathered. I'm going to put the other one in. I'm probably also going to pin up the hem line tonight, but I don't think I'm going to sew it. I think I'll wait till tomorrow to sew it. Uh, I'm probably going to put a pretty deep hem. I'm not sure if I want to cut it, but it's pretty long on me. Um, but I'll have to see. And then after that, she's putting buttons and buttonholes in. I pinned up the hem, so we can go ahead and stitch it real quick. Um, I think I'm just going to do a little running stitch, kind of close to the top. I ended up having to take up quite a bit on the hem. I took two inches and then four inches. Turned it. I took two inches, folded it under, and then took another four inches. So it's like six inches shorter than it was. But I think it's a good length now. Let's do the buttons real quick. So the original has a smaller um, yoke, even with how much I took it up, it's still a little bit smaller than than mine. So what I think I'm going to do is, although that one shows two, I'm going to do three. I'm going to do one here, one here, and one here. And it looks like the original is just, you know, china or bone buttons. So I got some china ones. Alright, buttonholes. Let's start with the center one, I think. And usually use like a chisel or something for this part, but I don't actually have one, so we're dealing with what I got. I go around real quick with the running stitch to kind of show where the stitching needs to end. And then we get to actually start doing the buttonhole stitch. Let's look at the nightcap. Alright, so here's the cap part. I suppose we can go ahead and put it into the crown bit. And most of the gathers are kind of more centered towards the top. And there's fewer towards the bottom. So yeah, I'll back stitch that and then we'll talk about attaching the ruffle afterwards. Alright, here we are for a nice little cap. looking pretty good. So I think our next step is we're going to attach the ruffle. And then go right ahead and sew this up. Probably put on the other um, crown bit while I'm at it. Alright, so prayer at the very bottom. And I put in a little casing and some ties. And we're going to go ahead and sew this in. We're just going to do a little running stitch. Alright, let's attach this one last tie and be done with the project. The ties are pretty small on the original one I'm seeing. These may actually be a hair too big. But they're just about right. I can't see how they're attached because they're used to, they're tied onto the mannequin head. So I'm just going to whip this in. And there we are. Completed nightcap. So I guess we're going to put everything on and we'll talk about it. And here we are. There's the nightdress. Um, I think it turned out rather well. It's not terribly huge on me. Like my 1860s one, I just feel like I'm drowning in fabric. This one fits much better I feel like and I do like that it's open on top because I really cannot stand things at my neck so especially when I sleep so even when I have my 1860s one I always undo the top two buttons just so I can actually feel like I can breathe so this one I'm very happy with how with that this is acceptable for 1830s that's wonderful the sleeves are a little tight when I bend like it's fine when I have my arms out but when I bend them they're a little tight but it's not terribly like uncomfortable or anything so I think it's it should be fine 
Um, buttons look like they're going to stay. It's a little like pull out this way, like it could have been pulled in a little bit more, but it's a night dress, so it doesn't really need to fit perfectly. Here's the little nightcap, which I don't always wear nightcaps. In fact, I generally don't, but um, sometimes I do. It would be nice just to have one, just in case. But again, like, it's right at my throat, so, like, that's usually why I don't wear one, or if I do wear one, I usually wear it like this. Um, but it fits really well, so. Not too difficult of a project. Um, I think it took me, let's see, today is Wednesday? Today's Wednesday, so I started this project Monday, and I was off Monday, so I had most of the day to work on it, and then maybe two hours yesterday, maybe three hours today, so... I, it's completely hand stitched both projects, so it probably took me. I'm actually quite pleased with how quickly it got sewn, and so yeah. We're prepped for an overnight events whenever those start happening again. But uh, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you in the next video.